Your doctor has recommended a lumbar epidural steroid injection as a treatment for your spine condition, and you'd like to know more about the process. This video will discuss common questions, how to prepare for the procedure, what the procedure consists of, what to expect afterwards, and how you can aid in your own recovery. The risks of an epidural steroid injection are similar to any other injection. Because you're piercing the skin, there is some slight risk of pain, slight risk of bleeding, slight risk of infection, and there could be some risk of injury to the nerve root based on uh, the needle itself uh, touching the nerve. These risks typically are minimized by safe practices uh, recommended by NAS members. For example, uh, risk of nerve injury is minimized by gentle uh, use of the needle and using imaging guidance to uh, place the needle in the correct position. The risk of bleeding is minimized by uh, making sure that you as the patient aren't taking uh, blood thinners or other anti-inflammatories that may increase the risk of bleeding. Risk of infection is minimized by the practitioner using sterile technique, and in many situations you may find that you're in almost an operating room environment and your spine injectionist will have a mask on uh, and uh, sterile scrubs. Uh, all of these things are done to minimize the risks uh, of the procedure to the patient. Epidural steroid injections are variable in the duration of time that they last. Some people get an immediate pain relief from the local anesthetic that's included in the injection, and others get a more long-lasting relief from the steroid. However, because steroids don't treat all types of pain, some people will have a shorter term response than others. When steroids do work for the treatment, uh, typically there's a prolonged response, and it can vary anywhere between weeks to months. A lot of patients are able to return to work or their regular activities immediately after the injection. Other practitioners like their patients to take it easy for a day or so prior to returning to more vigorous activity. Most patients tolerate these injections very well. Some patients want to be fully sedated. However, typically this carries an increased risk and generally is not recommended by most spine providers. Prior to the procedure, you'll want to check with your doctor regarding medications that you may take. Some of these, such as blood thinners like warfarin, aspirin, or Plavix, or even other anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen, may be necessary to discontinue. You'll want to check with your doctor up to one to two weeks prior to the procedure to make sure that you don't have to stop any of these medications. On the day of the procedure, you'll want to take all your regular medications. However, some providers may ask that you don't eat just prior to the procedure. After review of your medical records, including imaging, and a consent process, an IV may be placed. As a patient, you're then taken to a procedure area, which includes a table and typically an x-ray machine called fluoroscopy. For spine injections, you'll be lying on your stomach. The x-ray machine is used to visualize the correct location of your spine. The skin is sterilized and draped. A small amount of local anesthetic is used to numb the area. The needle is then moved to a target location with intermittent x-ray images. When in the correct place, contrast dye is typically injected to make sure the needle is around the nerve and there's not placement into a small blood vessel. The medication is then injected, typically numbing medicine and then steroid. The needle is removed, the skin is cleansed, and a band-aid is placed over the injection site. On the day of the injection, there may be local pain at the injection site. Some patients have immediate relief of back and leg pain due to the effect of the numbing medicine injected. On the next day, there again may be some pain at the injection site, and on occasion, pain is worse in the back or leg as the numbing medicine has worn off, but the steroid has yet to have an effect. A week or so afterwards, typically the pain is improved as the steroid is reaching its maximal effect. There are a few general do's and don'ts following an injection. As there's a small hole in the back, many providers do not want patients to take a bath, use a hot tub, or swim in a swimming pool. Showers are usually okay. Ice to the area can help with localized pain, and it's important to take all your regular medications as recommended by your physician. Continuing with exercise or physical therapy as prescribed is also important. If you're a smoker, you should be encouraged to discontinue smoking. This video discusses the general experience of a patient receiving a lumbar epidural steroid injection. Your experience may vary. Please talk to your doctor about the specifics of your case.